show a few weeks ago if I could put together a sort of beginner bag makers toolkit. And so I had that on my list. I thought it was a really great idea. When I was thinking about what would be in my beginner bag makers toolkit, I thought, you know, over the past four and a half years, I've reviewed so many notions on the show. How am I going to choose which ones are the most important? And so I didn't have to go far. I just looked on my cutting table, which is at t this table I'm sitting at right now. I keep a certain selection of items on the corner of the table because I'm either sewing a bag, uh, we're filming a video for making a bag, or I'm uh, designing a new bag pattern. And so these are the items I keep on my table because I'm using pretty much every single time. And so um, this is not an exhaustive list. Um, I wanted to start relatively small because this is for a beginner bag maker. I didn't want it to be overwhelming with two dozen notions. And so these are what I feel in my opinion, at least for my own sewing, the most important for bag making. So um, Danny's going to switch over to the overhead camera and I'm going to share the items that I use um, every time for every bag. So in my patterns, all squares and rectangles in the patterns are not represented by pattern pieces, but they need to be um, measured out. And so I have two rulers that I keep on my table. Um, perhaps not necessary to have two, but I like to have a smaller one for smaller squares or rectangles and then the larger one. So my smaller one, um, they're both made by OmniGrid. They're the OmniGrip rulers with uh, a little grip on the back. And uh, I have a six inch by 12 inch ruler and I also have a 24 inch by six inch ruler. So uh, I started off actually with a six and a half inch by 24 inch and I was always getting mixed up by that extra half inch and cutting things wrong all the time. So I swapped it out for an even six inch ruler. So these are great, like I said, for measuring squares or rectangles. Um, also good for, I should mention, um, if you're cutting binding, if you need to cut it on the bias, there's uh, different angles marked on the ruler, such as 45 degree angles. So you can line that up on the uh, corner edge of your fabric. There's other um, markings as well, but I'm usually using the, the 45 degree if I'm using um, this for bag making. Okay, the next thing on my list is Clover Chaco. I should mention about Clover Chaco, they do make it in other colors. I would like to discourage you against the other colors because I've used other colors such as pink, blue, yellow, they have silver, and those colors for whatever reason did not, the chalk is supposed to wipe away from your fabric when you're done marking, and for some reason the other colors don't um, mark, wipe away completely. So I recommend only the white, and it's great for two things. One is for marking on dark fabrics, um, it has a little wheel which as it moves it dispenses the chalk and it only goes in one direction so if you're trying to use it and it's not moving that means uh, wrong direction just swap it over to the other side uh, as you can see marked and then it'll wipe away um, not all immediately but you know certainly over time second thing for um, marking Besides dark fabrics, um, if you're marking anything on the right side of the bag, basically anything that might be seen in the finished bag, you always want to use, um, I recommend using either Clover Chaco or another chalk um, because you don't want to have any markings that you can see when the bag is finished. So say for instance, I'm marking placement for handle pieces. I'll use the Clover Chaco for the markings of the handles. I'll sew my handles in place and then when the bag's done, all this will just brush away. Um, number three on my list is friction pens and I use friction pens for marking kind of like the Clover Chaco but um, I for me personally when I'm cutting out my pattern pieces I like to draw my pattern pieces on the wrong side of the fabric um, so I'll use the friction pens for say I need a, a rectangle I need to cut that out so I'll mark the rectangle on the wrong side of the fabric and then I know a lot of people like to use a rotary cutter I just, like I mentioned last, I think it was last week, I'm a big fan of just marking and cutting out with scissors. And so um, I'll just mark on the wrong side of the fabric. I would like to mention, let me get my iron heated up. If you're marking on the right side of the fabric, I recommend using the Clover Chaco instead. While the friction pens do erase with the heat of an iron, um, and let me, let me get this marked up with some markings from my friction pens and these are kind of older, so they're, I guess, a little bit weaker right now. 
but um, I recommend not using this on the right side of the fabric because even though the heat of the iron, I need to heat this up a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Even though the iron will remove it and you can kind of, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can. So even though the heat of the iron did remove the markings, you can kind of see like a, a ghostly little shadow. So friction pens are great, but I really only use them on the wrong side of the fabric because of that reason, those little ghostly lines you don't want those showing up when the bag is finished and i've heard stories from friends that it also happens sometimes when it's super cold outside the markings will just sort of reappear similar to that okay n next on my list for beginner bag makers is a good pair of scissors and i always get questions about what scissors i use so these are kai number 7205 scissors i've used in the past two other brands i've had these probably since maybe 2013 so I've had these for a lot of years already other scissors made my hands feel really tired after a while from opening and closing and the Kai scissors are really smooth and they don't feel heavy on my hands they don't make my hands feel sore and they cut through fabric super great like people always say they cut through the fabric like butter so super smooth nice clean cuts um, having a great pair of scissors I know it sounds simple but uh, it makes sewing that much more fun and easy. The next tool I have that I love is the precision turning tool. And this is a metal tool with a tip. It's not pointy. It's got this um, round metal ball. And this is really great for several things. You can use it as a stiletto, meaning um, as you're feeding fabric through your sewing machine, you can use this end to kind of hold the fabric down. But what I usually use it for is if I'm making a pocket, or even a pillow where I've sewn two pieces of fabric right sides together. When you turn everything right side out and you need to poke out the corners, this is the tool for that because of the round ball. It won't um, puncture through your corner of the fabric or rip through the stitches. It'll just give you a nice uh, tidy corner. And again, uh, this is the precision turning tool. Of course, everyone needs a seam ripper, and this is the seam ripper that I use. It's the seam fix seam ripper, and it's got sort of a little rubber tip on the front and the back. Um, this will help you um, after you've seam ripped and you've got tons of little threads all over the place. This little rubber tip, all you need to do is run it over um, the area of the fabric where all those threads are, and this rubber tip will pull those threads out of the fabric so you can uh, get those released and um, get back to sewing and have a nice uh, neat area of fabric without all those little threads hanging out. Drift Wash Away Wonder Tape. I super love this. Um, it's really great for um, installing zippers or holding fabrics. Um, it's a quarter of an inch wide and it's double sided tape so um, you stick it down wherever you need it to be stuck. Just push it down with your fingers. What I usually do is I take my fingernail and sort of push down on the corner to kind of lift the paper up. And then the paper just peels back and that reveals the second side of the adhesive. Good for things like um, uh, if you're attaching uh, a zipper, which I wouldn't exactly attach it this way, but just to give you a demonstration. So it will temporarily hold the zipper without pins, keeping your zipper nice and flat. And it's, uh, I can't remember if I already mentioned it was water soluble. So if you perhaps put it in the wrong place or after you've installed your zipper and you still see some of the stickiness, you can just spritz it with um, a water bottle, um, give it a kind of little wiggle with your fingernail and then that adhesive will dissolve since it's water soluble. Again, that's just wash away wonder tape. And then the last thing um, my must have for bag makers is Wonder Clips. So I, this is my little container that I keep on my desk with all my Wonder Clips. These are great for, um, not only for bag making, I use this for holding quilt blocks, like those quilt blocks that I just shared with you when I was holding the fabrics right sides together. I, I did use my Wonder Clips for that. And they, uh, they do have markings. I really usually don't use the markings, but they have markings on the bottom for um, a quarter inch and I think half inch also in case you need to um, measure that edge. Perhaps you're working on quilt binding and you need to measure that edge as well. Um, besides these, I added two extra things, kind of bonus things in there. Um, our seam guide, which Danny's going to put a picture up on the screen of the seam guide. Um, this is just a handy tool for um, finding seam allowance on your sewing machine and your needle will just slide into the slot 
on the right hand side depending on what seam allowance you need. Um, I have a full video demonstrating the seam allowance um, if you're interested in that and the link to that seam guide is in the description with the video. And then of course um, I always get questions about what thread I use so um, this is Orifil 40, uh, 40 weight thread. I also have on my machine that I was using earlier uh, 50 weight thread. So the 40 weight thread is thicker and the 50 weight thread is thinner. For my quilt blocks I was using the 50 weight thread right here today, earlier today. Um, everyone has their own personal preference with thread but I wanted to mention um, what thread I use since I get the, this question very often. So um, that is my bag makers toolkit. Link to all the items is in the description. Maybe you're a beginner bag maker or you have a friend or family member that would like to get into sewing bags but um, they need a few more tools perhaps in their bag making toolkit. Um, so um, all these items are in the description and of course like I mentioned earlier this is not an exhaustive list but just the things that I for sure have to have on my cutting table before I start working on a bag. All right, so I will be answering some questions live in just a minute. So if